In about 1986, Motorola made this Synad meter. This is a R-1013 Alpha. And what this meter does is it reads Synad. And you're thinking, well, I have no idea what a Synad is. Well, Synad is an abbreviation. First part, uh, SI is C, that's Spanish for yes, and NAD is abbreviation for what? Oh, it is? Oh, okay. I, I was just told that I was incorrect on what SYNAD stood for. I was, uh, uh, my team here uh, told me I was misleading you. So, uh, what it actually uh, stands for is signal, noise, and disturbance, not disturbance. <laughs> I have no idea why I said disturbance, but it actually stands for distortion. Okay, something my team again had to correct me on. For those of you who, who have not a clue what this does, how to use it or anything like that, this is used for communications. Run a thousand hertz tone through your radio receiver through the microphone or antenna or some input as such. And you do that with your uh, signal generator, audio generator. And then you take these outputs here and you run it from the speaker into here. And this meter here will deflect on how much it hears that thousand hertz signal. And what this does is it, it uh, it nulls out all the garbage, all the hash that the radio is receiving, and it only listens for that thousand hertz tone. So it's it's a lot cleaner way of tweaking and peeking out your your receive radio. And you're trying to get to a 12 dB synad or more, if all plausible, and this only listens to a thousand hertz. So if you're audio generator, signal generator is off, then the deflection of the meter is going to um, show as such. So it, it, um, you want to get that down as far as you plausibly can. Now I've owned this device for quite some time and I've never had a chance to use it because it's broken and I haven't had a chance to work on it. I, I don't know how long I've owned it, a couple years now I reckon. And so today is its lucky day. I'm going through and working on a lot of my test gear and other gear and a lot of it I'm not even doing videos on. I'm just shotgunning them and trying to get this crap uh, taken care of as quickly as I can because I need this stuff up and running. But I thought, hey, this might be a worthwhile video as there's not too many on this Motorola. So let's go ahead and turn it on. I have my signal generator set at a thousand hertz at one millivolt. And if we plug this in, we should get a deflection. And as you see, we're not even getting any meter movement whatsoever. No, probably because we don't have power turned on just yet. So let's go ahead and turn on our isolation transformer. And now let's flick this switch to see no meter movement. So today I'm going to crack this open and I'm going to see if I could try to fix this. There's Not a lot happening on the inside. I've not opened this, uh, but I have seen what it looks like on the inside. This uses all point to point parts. We have a half a dozen capacitors in here. We have two LM384 uh, quad op amps 
and you can see that we have some Peruvian white powder poking out of here. So that is a telltale sign that this thing is chock full of uh, cocaine. And that's probably why it does not work is because it's hooked on the cocaine. And as you know, once you get hooked on cocaine, certain parts of your anatomy no longer work. And that's probably what had happened here. So we've got this taken off. And here you can see more of the white Peruvian uh, powder. And honestly, what that's telling us is no, it's not cocaine. That this has probably been <clears throat> uh, stored in a damp area somewhere. And it's got... Uh, some creeping crud, probably. You take the bottom off. Oh, wow. Not too bad here, but we definitely got it here. So, definitely got it's got the crud. And here, See the screws all rusted, so we probably got a bad ground at that section. We'll tear this off, clean this up. I'm going to go through and check this board out and see if I see any bad parts and pieces. Um, we have some. Caps here, two fuses, some electrical lids uh, there, 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 and there. Full bridge rectifier. We know that it's getting power to the LED light at least. We got some trimmer caps here, which are for aligning this device. I'm going to pull the chips out and see uh, for chip creep. I might put a little um, um, electrical contact cleaner in the sockets to help clean that out. And I'm going to do that right now off camera. But we definitely got that white powder right there. So definitely in a damp environment. In this next demonstration, you need to mind your volume uh, if you have loud audio or headphones on or something. We're going to produce some uh, high tones. So just mind yourself while we get ready to demo this next step. I've gone through and I've checked all the capacitors on my Syncor LC75 uh, capacitor checker. And for the most part, they all suck and they all got to go. Well, actually, they all suck. They got to go. The only ones that um, I did not check was these these uh, polys or whatever they are. Um, I did check them uh, on my volt -ohm meter that has a um, capacitor checker on them, but it don't check the ESR or um, leakage or anything like that. Uh, did check value, value seemed to be right there. So at worst case scenario, we know that the electrolytics have to go. Now I did not uh, reseat or clean the sockets on the LCM 478s. I believe that's what they were. Um, yeah, LM3 478s. However, I did go through and I did check them with uh, the O-scope and with a signal tracer and they work just fine. 
Speaking of which, I did take a signal tracer. That one right there, my my vintage uh, Radio Shack signal tracer, and went through and checked out the board. And again, everything appeared to be hunky dory. And this is the step now where you need to mind your earwigs. This is going to be a visual, and this will be a audible as well as I'm going to haul or things out. So let me point you at the oscope. Okay, I have the one of my overhead lights turned off so you could see that better as well as see me fantastic in the reflection right there. Perfect. I'm going to turn up the signal generator um, and we're going to see that this thing is actually working. The problem turns out is the meter. Here we go. So what you're hearing here is a thousand hertz tone being injected into the front panel like you're supposed to and the tone right now is nulled and we could see that because we have nothing on our screen. Now let me change to 1100 hertz, kilohertz. Oops. Try that again. All right, let's try that again because I forgot to hold the <clears throat> oscope probe to the other side of the meter. So here we see our half of a sine wave going through. And now let's go ahead and change frequency. We're going to bump it up by 100. So that's 1100. And then we drop it down. That's 900 hertz. So we see that it does work. That it does null out the uh, signal like it's supposed to. And because I know how much you like visuals, here is another visual. Uh, as you see, we have a AC voltmeter uh, connected now across the uh, the meter that's in the uh, synad and I'm at uh, 1000 Hertz and there we bumped it up to 1100 back down to 1 and there's 900 as you see I demonstrated that the issue was in this meter uh, I'm going to tear this meter out. I'm not sure if there's any kind of networking inside the meter, anything that I could do to manipulate it to make it work. Um, I don't even think by tuning this adjustment right here would make it move. And no, it didn't. Of course, that's not the right tool, but hey, it worked. Let me tear that out. Now, I haven't, uh, like I said, I haven't uh, done anything to the board other than just checked it out. I still need to clean the contacts and clean up all this white uh, powder off of that. Let me tear this meter out and see what happens. If we look at this meter here, I have um, 10 milliamps going in at uh, 100 microvolts. About as low as I can go on this power supply but if I tap the two alligators together you see that that meter responds and if I do the same thing with this meter same current nothing So, uh, I'm going to say the meter is dead. And if we look at the meter, there's really no way to break into it. I do believe I have to pull all this off in order to break into it. And maybe up underneath this black piece there will be some uh, screws that will... garner me access so 
I need to find something to pop that off with that. In this next section, I'm going to repeat myself. Well, I'm going to reshoot this section. As I was wrapping this section up, I glanced up at the monitor and noticed the camera was not recording anymore. To find out that I filled up my video card, to find out that I apparently forgot to turn the camera off, and I, I got a big section of, uh, of me just dorking on this project, which will get trashed. But uh, I scrubbed through it quickly, so I, I don't think I missed anything, but just in case I did, and there's a continuity issue throughout this video, well, now you know the rest of the story. Let's carry on with this story. I was unsuccessful in tearing this meter apart. Stabby device included. Could not break it apart. Used hot air. And without destroying it, I opted to just stop. Now, the meter does, does uh, move freely with glare and everything. That's terrible, ain't it? There we go. I play Pong with it. So it does move freely. Just no matter what I try to get it to activate either by current, by voltage, or tearing it apart, I was unsuccessful. So we're just going to call that uh, dead. Now I want to bring your attention to the um, the oscope. What you're looking at is uh, the oscope is connected to the meter terminals. So this is just demonstrating again that yes, the device does work. It's just the meter is dead. And again, if I bump it up by a hundred we could see it respond. We drop it down by a hundred and we see it respond. And what I just did there, I went from 500 millivolts down to 20 millivolts and you could still see it is there. We have a little bit of noise happening at the floor. As stated, this is good for, well maybe I didn't state, uh, this is good for 40 millivolts all the way through 10 volts. So it's it's definitely good to go there with the uh, the voltage. So uh, what to do next? Well, I could uh, keep searching eBay for another one of these, either a parts or a uh, another or a replacement, and just use this as a parts device. Maybe another meter will come up. I have seen a aftermarket meter that might work from China for about fourteen dollars. I'll go ahead and order that, bugs included, I'm sure. And I will wait before I replace any capacitors or any other components, clean this or, or whatever, until I could actually get a working meter. I guess I could always jerry-rig it and um, just plug the hole, put a BNC connector on that, and then run it to the AC voltmeter here on the workbench and use that. So I, I've got options. I don't really want to jerry rig it if I don't have to, but it's there. So with that, I will go ahead and end this video for now. And uh, I may post or I just may uh, wait until I get the meter. We will find out which one I do. Thanks for watching. As always, I do appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please like, subscribe, share, and most definitely comment. All right. Talk to you guys later. Catch you in the next one. See ya.